Hello and welcome to Ultraviolet Network's Use Case Explored. I'm Matt Sharif, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at Fortisassi Secure Private Access. As we've discussed previously, Fortisassi is Fortinet's secure access services edge offering. It's built on known Fortinet technologies with the orchestration and complex configuration handled by Fortinet so that you can get to managing it. Just to recap, the three SASE use cases are secure internet access, secure private access, and secure SAS access. In this video, we'll be focusing on the secure private access use case of Fortisassi. So as we've covered in the previous video, remote access used to be done by backhauling all the traffic to the data center or to home office or headquarters or wherever your workloads resided, and then the users access them from there. This had the disadvantage of even the internet traffic being backhauled to home office and then it needing to be sent and broken out to the internet from there, which required larger VPN concentrators and or blocked internet access. Or if it allowed internet access, it required larger firewalls and internet pipes to filter the traffic according to organizational security policy. As things evolved, organizations got smart and they started split tunneling their traffic out to the internet. That was not without its risks as you could no longer ensure endpoint security as far as downloading a, downloading a file. It's not supposed to download or accessing sites that a user is not supposed to access that either pose a security risk or that don't comply with organizational security policy. So many organizations added uh, the DNS filtering uh, capability. And then as we saw with the, uh, with the pandemic, some organizations moved completely to SaaS-based solutions as well as the cloud, and that was fantastic for them. But as I covered in the previous video, this is not a one-size-fits-all solution or use case. A lot of organizations still have on-prem or in data center resources that they need to provide remote access to. This would be great to offer if we could have something that looks somewhat like this. So you would have your remote users connect to the nearest Fortis SAS POP, anything bound for the internet, will get filtered according to the internet access policy. Anything bound for internal workloads can get sent off to either our primary or secondary hub. The assumptions in this video are that you have a Fortis SASE instance that you are the admin of, and you're using Fortis SASE in tunnel mode and as opposed to secure web gateway mode. Enough slideware, let's get to the fun stuff. So before we get started, let's take a look at the um, at the goal we're trying to accomplish here. The goal we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to establish this purple line here. This is going to be our IPsec tunnel into our data center. Fortis SE currently is running in SIA only so I can access the internet securely. And then, but that's all. I cannot, for instance, let's go to our laptop over here, our computer, and say, hey, um, CMD and ping VDI 002 to ultra violet dot local. That is our jump box there. It says ping request could not find host VDI 002 dot ultra violet dot local, nor should it be able to, frankly. So how do we get to a point where we can allow our remote users to access on-prem resources while browsing the internet securely using Fortisassi? Well, let's take a look at our Fortisassi really quick. So we have two managed endpoints. One of them is my phone, the other one is that computer we've been working on. To enable secure private access, we're gonna to go to private uh, network, private access, and we're gonna start configuring. So before we fill these values in, let's take a look at what the hub configuration needs to look like. Notepad, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Fortis SASE configuration. This is what is configured on the hub that we will be connecting Fortis SASE to. So I have a dynamic uh, phase one or dynamic IPsec interface uh, called UV nets. We've set the Ike version to two. This is required. That device disable is required as this is an ADVPN deployment. From, I, I'll post a link for ADVPN specifics. Mode config is going to be enabled because we cannot set IP addresses to the pops. If you recall, when I covered Fortis SASE deployment, you get to select four pops on deployment, 
And in this case, I don't get to choose the IP addresses, so I have to assign them dynamically. The proposals um, are, I have a number of them here. However, the only one that I know will work off the top of my head is going to be AAS 256 SHA-256. The Fortis SASE documentation has um, a good deal of information on what proposals will, are supported. Also, requisite for ADVPN is add or out disable. I set the dead peer detection on idle. That is the Florida gate default. Auto discovery sender enable. Again, ADVPN. Network overlay enable and network, over, and network ID is 100. If I had multiple dynamic interfaces listening on this INET lag, this is how I would differentiate them if I were using FortiGate overlays. This is my IP pool that I will be pulling from to assign to the POPs. And obviously our PSK secret's been omitted. On BGP, um, the notable bits are obviously you need to set your ASN and you need to set your RID, your router ID. If you don't set those, the process doesn't start, period. You don't even get it that it's trying to connect or anything. Another thing we need to enable in this case is IBGP multipath enable, um, additional path enable, and additional path select four. You can choose two, that's the default. I chose four because I have other plans for this hub later on. A couple of other things to be aware of on the neighbor group, since this is a dynamic and I don't really know what the IP address of the incoming spokes are, and I don't wanna have to manage that. I'm setting up a neighbor group. I'm telling, I'm in, I'm setting next hop self enable, soft reconfiguration enable, so I can go ahead and um, send out updates without having to bounce the instance. And then uh, route reflector client enable, because in this case we're using uh, IBGP for ADVPN, we need to have it act, as, we need the hub to act as a route reflector. Otherwise, IBGP's loop prevention mechanism, which is don't advertise or don't learn a route that's been re-advertised essentially if the hub learns it and I need to re-advertise that back to Fort Assassi those routes will be discarded so in this case while there are no other spokes this is still very important to add if I decide to add other spokes which I will in at a later time the neighbor range this is going to be our primary neighbor range it's 172.26.26.0. However, uh, there's been some discussion as to whether or not I needed to add this for the router IDs. I added, added this because I know this works. I have not tested this not working. And I'll elaborate a little bit more on this um, once we get over to Fortis Assey. We're advertising our uh, 10.200.0.0/24 network. And the last thing I want to touch on is the uh, the tunnel interface itself. I'm giving it 172.26.26.1 with a remote IP of 26.26.254 slash 24. This is the only statically IP'd interface in the overlay. So let's just keep that in mind. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and minimize this. Oh, I wanna add one more thing. Uh, it's not visible from here, but you need to have a policy at the spoke side that enables, or I'm sorry, you need to have a policy on the hub side that allows communication from the overlay subnet, which is uh, this subnet, uh, the this subnet right here, into your data center. All right, great. How do we configure this on Fortis Sassy? Well, as I stated, we're going to go ahead and fill in these. Uh, this is the hub's IP public IP address, and we'll add the pre-shared key. BGP router ID subnet cannot match, it must not match the overlay or the BGP peer IP address, which in this case is our hub, okay? So these have to be in different subnets, hence why 172.27.26 versus 172.26.26.24. Overlay ID is overlay 100, and my ASN is 65. 1001 health check IP. We did not discuss this. This is basically going to use um, the SD WAN SLAs for health checks. There's two other things we have to do after this. One, we got to configure our split DNS. What that's going to enable us to do is it's going to enable us to send any internal DNS requests internally to the data center so that we can resolve internal resources. 
namely VDI 002.ultraviolet.local, and also set up a or refine our private access policy. So I don't have a um, redundant hub to configure at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that for right now. If I had a second ISP or something like that, that we, this would uh, apply. And as you can see, all of our hub assignments and all of our hubs are up and running. And that 172.27 VGP router ID subnet is where it's choosing to um, populate these numbers from. So, okay, great. With that being done, now we get to go to dns and we're going to configure our split uh, dns traffic i've already pre-configured this and basically what this tells us is if i go to edit anything destined for ultraviolet.local please send it to these dns servers great now policies for private access, it will install a private access policy for you. Remember what I said about there not being a policy present, the tunnel won't come up. However, I wanna refine this a little bit to some values that um, that I've already pre-specified. So we're gonna specify only the data center traffic at this point. This can be any subnets you want. And I wanna change my profile group from the default to ultraviolet private access. If we take a look, web filter and DNS filter are disabled. And the reason why is because none of my internal uh, websites or my internal DNS records are rated by FortiGuard and this would in inadvertently end up with those being blocked. So if we go back and take a look at our endpoint here, uh, let's see, so D and so we should now, if we do IP config, so I've got 10.2.12, this is our SSL VPN uh, adapter. Great, 10.2.12.128. So if I do a ping VDI 002.ultraviolet.local, great, he responds. Now, I'm not sure if I have Windows firewall enabled on that or not, so let's try, uh, um, let's try actually, uh, RDPing to setting up the connectivity, and we should have an RDP session here in a moment. There we go. And remember that policy I spoke to you about. So I'm pre setting this up to be an ADVPN hub. And as you can see, I've got remote spoke lands as well as my overlay network in there going to the DC land management. I've pre-populated this policy as I stated. So we're in at the hub. Great, I can RDP to my jump host. So that's all good and well, but what about internal websites, internet, etc.? If we pretend that my for the manager is our local internet. You see that resolves. It's on the same 10200.0.6. So we'll go ahead and manage it all to that network. That's okay. That local. And it's because he's using a self-signed cert and I don't have that in my trusted certificate store, but we are in our corporate intranet. In this video, we took a look at the secure private access use case offered by Fortis Sassy. We went ahead and connected the Fortis Sassy POPs to our hub. We examined the hub configuration as it needs to be. We covered the required bits of configuration. I'll make sure I include that in the article. I'll also include some links to some official Fortinet docs explaining the process in depth, as well as what official ciphers are supported. We also configured split DNS resolution so that our internal DNS resolves to our internal DNS servers. Everything else can go to public DNS. Last but not least, we tweaked our public access rule so that it only brokers access to the resources we want to allow. Of course, you could always add more rules for more users to access different resources. This was just a simple overview of the feature. I'd like to thank you for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Madman out.